Hello class. Um, as you can see, we are going to go over St. Francis's Library's homepage. Um, I'm not sure if you've gone over this before or if you've looked at it yourself, but just in case, I wanted to go ahead and have us look at it together. I do want to go ahead um, and apologize. I am working from home and I have two dogs. They are currently napping but sometimes they like to make a lot of noise. Um, so if you hear any puppy noises in the background, those are my dogs and um, just ignore it. So we are on St. Francis's um, library homepage. And as you can see, there is a lot of stuff um, to look at at once. The first thing that is front and center um, is this search bar. We will go ahead and come back to that later. There are also the librarian recommendations for um, novels that they think students might be interested in. There is a section on news and information that is related to St. Francis's Library. And they also have a calendar that shows their days and hours of operation. Um, one thing that I wanted to go over really quick is the library tutorials page. These are just different tutorials that walk you through various information that you might need for research or future classes. Um, two, actually three. So these aren't going to be required for this class but there are um, tutorials to go over evaluating your sources and these are things that are broad areas you want to look at when you're considering using a source so who created the content what is the purpose of the content when was it created um, is it current for literature isn't necessarily a requirement but the more current your information is, the more accurate it will be to your topic. And then it goes over credibility. And as it says, it is one of the most important things, which it absolutely is. Um, you can use content credibility, um, this content credibility checklist. So who's the author? Um, you can judge information on the sponsoring organization. It tells you what, the, or it asks you to look at the creator's qualifications. Is the source well known and trusted? What is the domain name? Now this may, may seem silly, but domain names that end in .gov or .edu tend to be more reliable than any source that just ends in .com. And then for books, um, you want to look at the book jacket because that information can be confirmed, as it says. Um, you also can track the author's employment, their publishing credits, that kind of a thing. Um, publisher information, university presses, as it says, are considered trustworthy sources. Self-published or popular presses are not considered scholarly because like with news media and news articles that I've told you not to use in this class, and um, they are more opinionated than actually research-based. I'm sure there are people out there that have done plenty of research, but it is better to have sources that are from um, reputable publishers. And then for journal articles, it's kind of the same thing. You want to make sure that they are peer-reviewed, that there is information on their education or their current professional position. Um, peer review is actually really important, especially for a scholarly journal. It shows that there are other scholars in that same field who accept um, their work as being credible. And then there's also bias and intent, which we've looked at without really talking about rhetoric can actually be um, a good way to decide whether a source is biased or not. 
And as it says right here, bias is generally unavoidable. Um, this is why I always tell you to be objective in your writing, because even though we, we all have biases, um, as it says, it can be limited, which is why we want to remain objective. It helps prevent our personal bias from appearing in the text. So again, it goes over all the resources that you, or all the questions you want to look at for your resources. Um, it goes over specific questions for web resources, books, journal articles, and then currency. As I talked about, um, for literature, it's not really that relevant. Um, you still want something that is more current than was published in the 1800s, um, unless you're using it for a primary source rather than a secondary. Um, but for sciences, as it says here, um, you want something within the past five years because unlike literature, science and medical information have a tendency to change rapidly. And then again, there's a checklist for currency so it just tells you to look for publication date. Um, and then currency also talks about the importance um, of some topics compared to other topics. Go to the next one. And then there is a resource evaluation worksheet. I'll go ahead and open that. And then um, you just fill out this information and you submit. Right, we'll go ahead and close that one. We'll close this one. Okay, so for plagiarism, this is another tutorial. This is more of a walkthrough, and it's not at all required, but if you want to go ahead and do it um, just to kind of introduce yourself to what St. Francis is, um, plagiarism, considerations are because again it is a serious academic offense and even in the professional world if you are caught plagiarizing it diminishes your credibility but anyways if you wanted to go ahead and complete it um, feel free to screenshot the end of it and email it to me I will give you extra credit points for finishing it it won't be you know a whole grade increase but it'll be some point and then citations. This walks you through um, what a citation is and the, the two different types of citations. So we've talked about having um, a works cited page and this explains that uh, as information, readers need to locate sources in case they want to go back and read it for themselves. And then in-text citations are equally as important because it tells the reader where the ideas came from and what ideas are actually yours versus another source's. And it explains why citations are needed. Um, we're going to go ahead and skip past that one. It gives you the different styles for um, citation. Yep, there's APA, MLA, and Chicago are the three main ones. So I will let you go through all of those on your own. And um, if you also want a more direct website, Purdue Owl's site is a little easier to navigate. I'm also biased because it's a wonderful site. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. This tab is a little self-explanatory. Um, it is about renting a study room. And um, the study rooms can only be rented for two hours, but you can rent one based off of the number of people who are going to be in your group. So one to four, five to eight. Um, if you have a major exam coming up, I recommend renting a room for yourself because it, you know, it gets rid of the distractions that are often found in the library or in your dorm rooms, even at home. So we'll go ahead and close out of that one. And then I'm not sure if you know, but there's such a thing as interlibrary loan. 
So while St. Francis has a lot of source information that is available to you, they don't have everything. So some of the resources um, that St. Francis may not have can be accessed through interlibrary loan. And basically all it is, is they rent um, resource material from another library, whether it is a book or a special collection or even something that one of their databases doesn't possess. So we'll go ahead and close that one. And again, this is another um, self-explanatory page, but I want to open it anyways. So you can make an appointment to talk directly to a librarian, or you can email or call the librarians directly. You can also send a general email, you can call and you can text them. And then I'm going to go ahead and open this page, but we'll get back to it later. So I know we've already started on your position papers and you've pretty, you've probably done a lot of research already, but I wanted to go ahead and show you how to kind of work through the research process for future papers. This will also help you for the final draft of your position paper. So St. Francis's search bar is gonna be a little more open-ended than a databases search. And um, this has everything that St. Francis has access to. So books, articles, videos, as it says. So we're gonna go ahead and do, oops, Louise Erdrich. I'm not sure if some of you know, she was just nominated for a Pulitzer Prize for her Night Watchman novel. So as you can see, this has, um, it explains what the source is, where it's from, and it shows you every, na every time her name is mentioned. This one's Critical Insights. So it's going to be an entire novel based off of um, Louise Erdrich's works. So this is just a general topic. I don't have a specific topic yet. Um, I want to see how much research is out there on Louise Erdrich before I actually decide to narrow down my focus. Looking at what source material is out there can help you try and figure out what topic you want to discuss, especially if you only have a general idea. So say I only wanted to do something based off of Louise Erdrich, but I didn't know where to start. This would be a good way to look at other information and other sources, as well as other topics people are already discussing. Because remember, as academic writing, we want to had, add our voice into topics that are already being discussed by colleagues. It also goes over, um, it also, sorry, has access to books that she has published. So we are going to go back. Um, personally, I don't like using the search bar because there is too much information. So we're going to go back to the databases page that I opened up. And as the other tabs have been, this one's self-explanatory, it is access to every da database that St. Francis has access to. And there are databases for numerous subjects. It even breaks some of them down, like paramedical applied science, or sorry, paramedic applied science, philosophy, studio art, stock market, taxes, for our purposes, um, I am going to go to JSTOR. JSTOR has a lot of journal article and book information. It's primarily, though, for the humanities. Um, there's also social sciences and sciences included, but its primary focus is on the humanities. So we're going to go ahead and open that. And their search bar, I'm going to, once again, type in my general topic idea. 
All right. So you can see that, again, there are numerous topics that are being addressed here just because it's any topic that is relevant to Louise Erdrich. And then down here, you kind of get a small description of what the source is going to cover. There are so many topics. I love this. I am um, not that this is relevant, but I wrote a paper on Louise Erdrich about her um, adaptation of oral tradition within her novels. Right. And as you can see, there's just, there's a whole bunch of information and different topics. Again, that makes it a little hard to narrow down a topic. Um, but some of these topics are being repeated. So there are certain trends that are going on like post-colonial, post-modernism, um, I already know what I wanted to look at. So we're going to go ahead and go into advanced search. So the keyword would be Louise Erdrich. Cannot spell today. And you can select all fields. So author, item title, abstract, caption. Um, so again, the keyword would be looking at just Louise Erdrich as an author or any item title that mentions Louise Erdrich or an abstract that mentions Louise Erdrich, that kind of a thing. And then I know that I want to look for Louise Erdrich's um, community and her works. This little button here I find to be particularly important um, because you can select what kind of access you want. I like to only have content that I can access presented to me. You can select all content, but I find that a little harder to work through. And then for my personal use, I only want articles. Um, they are easier to read. Rather than reading an entire book, we're going to do English only. And um, we talked a little bit about the currency of resource information. So I'm going to do 1980-21. You can also look for a specific journal article or book title that references Louise Erdrich if you have an ISBN number but not access to the resource. You can type in the ISBN number here. You can also narrow down the discipline that you want um, your searches to be focused in. So you could do our history, education, folklore would actually be a really good one for Louise Erdrich, but we're going to go ahead and skip past that. Scroll down and hit submit advanced search. So um, as you can see, I now only have 171 results versus, actually I didn't look at how many, um, but definitely over 171. And this way I get sources that are based specifically on what I want to talk about. Again, I don't have a thesis drawn up, but now that I've narrowed down um, what topic I want to cover, I can go ahead and begin to look at um, the topic that I want to, the topics that I want to discuss in more detail. Um, you can automatically download the PDF. You can save it. Um, you can cite it from here. I recommend opening them up and looking at them before. That way you can see um, what pages, uh, how many pages you're going to be looking at, when it was published, where it was published. That way you can go ahead and decide if the article that you're looking at is considered credible. And then this lets you actually look at every single page. Again, I would recommend downloading it because if you're anything like me, you can print it and then read it, you know, in print versus on screen. Um, I personally find reading in print easier. And then you get all these um, 
URLs. Uh, one thing, I know we just talked about this, is how to cite any resource material that you use. And the reason that I really like JSTOR is it has that little button and it brings up the various um, citation styles that you would need based off of this specific journal article. So we're gonna go ahead and copy. We're gonna pretend this is my works cited page and paste. Um, one really important thing when you're pasting into a Word doc is to hit merge formatting. That way it automatically matches the font and font size that is the rest of your paper. So you don't have to go back and manually change everything. So go ahead and hit paste. Mine is already um, set up to have a hanging indentation. So we're gonna go ahead and select it because I wanna show you how to do that just in case you don't. Um, so highlight, um, right click, scroll down to paragraph. And this little section right here you can select either none, first line, or hanging. And every single works cited page in MLA formatting needs to have a hanging indentation. It also needs to be double spaced. And I apologize, um, your works cited page needs to be alphabetical. So it's gonna be based off of whatever the letter of the author's the first letter of the author's last name. So say I had another article that the last name started with B, it would be placed above um, Sanders. All right, that is pretty much everything that I have for you um, based off of St. Francis's library page. If you need anything else from me, as always, please reach out. I am happy to help you any way that I can. And again, if you want me to look over your position papers before you submit them, go ahead and send them to me. I am absolutely happy to look over them and make sure um, that you have everything kind of adjusted or prepared for the final draft. And the last thing that I wanted to say really quick is if you feel confident in your final draft, feel free to go ahead and submit it early. I know that the end of summer semester is very close to the beginning of fall semester. So if you just wanna go ahead and get it out of the way, feel free to submit it early. And that is all I have for you um, for the library and research aspect of um, this lecture. All right, I hope you have a great day.